high. Sometimes you want to copy tonal characteristics of a signal and to apply it to another one. For example, you are mixing female and male vocals singing in duet and you want them to sound as close to each other as possible. Or perhaps you want to apply a tone of a bass guitar to a synth bass. Or even more, you wish your mix to sound similar to your favourite commercial song. In all these and similar cases, we could spend hours and hours adjusting an equaliser. However, there is a much faster and easier way to get a similar tone. I'm talking about so-called matching equalizers, made purposely for this task. Melder Production offers three equalizers possessing such a feature. They are the M Auto Dynamic EQ, M Auto Equalizer, and M Freeform Equalizer. Each of them you can use for matching frequency responses of two different sounds. In this tutorial, I'll show you this technique. In my first example, I'm going to match the tone of two kick drums. Here is a small session with two tracks. The first track holds a reference kick drum, and on the second one, I put the kick whose sound I'd like to alter. As you see, they are quite different. For them to be matched, first I must get the reference kick's frequency response. For that, I'll use the M Auto Dynamic EQ, the most powerful equalizer from Melder Production, and insert it into the first track. What we're interested in is a panel called the Automatic Equalizer. To open it, click on this button. Next, I press the Analyze Source button. Now my equaliser is ready to receive an input signal for the analysis. I'm playing back the kick drum as long as the red curve needs to settle down. With repetitive sounds like this, three to four hits is enough. However, with unpredictable signals, vocal, live instruments or a full mix, it can take longer. Sometimes the analysis can take up to 20 seconds. It depends on the source. Watch for the red graph. If you see that a further analysis doesn't add anything new to its shape, you can stop it by clicking on the Analyze Source button again. In my case, it's done. Now I need to transfer it to another instance of M Auto Dynamic EQ, which I'm going to insert into the second track. To do that, I click on the Copy button. Actually, this button copies the state of an entire plugin. However, because no changes were made here, I can use it for copying this frequency response, knowing I won't bring any unneeded settings to the second instance. All I need to do now is paste that copy into the M Auto Dynamic EQ on the second track. Done. A longer but safer way of doing it is click on this button in the first instance. In a pop up menu, select Save option. In the open browser, find a folder you want to save a spectral response into. Name it and click on OK. Then open the second instance and click on the same button. Choose the Load option and find your file in the browser. Double click on it to upload. Great! I'm ready to find out the frequency response of the second kick, the target. For that, I click on the Analyze Target button and I press Play. Now I'm watching for the blue graph. The logic is the same. As soon as it's steady, the analysis is done and I can click on the Analyze Target button to turn it off. Straight after that, we can see that two new buttons have appeared, the Equalize and Separate. The first button is intended for making the sound of the second kick to be like the first one. And the second button, Separate, is meant to do the opposite. For my task, I need the Equalize. After clicking on it, the plugin will do its magic and will build an equalizing curve. Let's hear these two kick drums again. We can tell that the second kick drum timber goes much closer to the first one, but they still sound quite different to each other. And this is important to understand that by this technique, we change only a target frequency response. Properties like the attack, sustain, release and harmonics stay the same. In other words, we are not turning a dog into a cat. We are just changing the colour of its hair. If you want to alter the signal's DNA, you need something like M-Morph or M-Transformer. 
Now, when you know the basics, let's dig a bit deeper. On the Automatic Equalizer panel, click on the Settings button. Here we find the settings we can use to improve spectrum matching. The first two are bottom and top frequency. These controllers limit a frequency range in which you want the matching to happen. By default, the Automatic Equalizer covers the entire 20 Hz to 20 kHz range. However, it would be smart to limit this range to the useful range of a signal you are working with. In the next example, I'm going to match a guitar to piano. First, I get the piano tone which I like and transfer its spectral print to the guitar's M Auto Dynamic EQ. Next, I get the spectrum of the guitar. Then I open the automatic equalizer settings and put 200Hz and 9kHz for the bottom and top frequency parameters accordingly. Click on the equalize button. Done. Let's hear the guitar track again. To my taste, it sounds a little overcooked. So to get the balance between the original and new sounds, I use the equalizer's dry wet controller. I leave it here. Now if I play both tracks, they will sound much closer to each other. Here is what would happen if I tried to match the full range. It's not too bad, but it's not what I'm after. The point of limiting the frequency range is to apply the equalizer's resources to what we need, instead of wasting them for something we won't hear in the mix anyway like this huge boost at low mids. The next important parameter is the maximum bands. It sets the quantity of bands that the automatic equalizer uses for matching. For the M Auto Dynamic EQ, the maximum is 7, and for the M Auto Equalizer, it's 10. The more bands you set, the more accurate the matching will be. Having said that, don't neglect smaller values. Frequently, four bands is all what's needed. Another parameter that deeply influences the matching is the smoothness on the plugin's user interface. You see, the automatic equalizer evaluates an averaged frequency response. And because this parameter smooths out the graph, it may help to improve matching. Try different settings and see what works for you. So far, we've been talking about the spectrum matching. However, another useful function of the matching equalizers is the separation. That is, it amplifies the difference between these two sounds even further. Again, I'm talking about the frequency response only. The procedure is pretty much the same as we did with matching. The only difference is, instead of clicking on the equalize button, we must click on the separate. If we open the automatic equalizer panel again, we'll find the parameter called the space in mix limit. It sets a threshold for signals considered for separating. So the signals with levels lower than the parameter's value are not considered as a problem and will be ignored. Let me demonstrate its effect on the same example. At the default value, the plugin counts only two peaks as problematic. And when I click on the separate, the plugin creates two cuts corresponding to these two peaks. But if I lower the parameter's value and click on separate again, the automatic equalizer will create a much wider and deeper cut. Plus, it did some extra cuts. Important. 
the space in mix limit parameter is only relevant to separating signals. The next controller down is the algorithm. It offers two types of algorithms utilized for building the equalizer's response. The default one is the most accurate, but the most CPU hungry. However, because the CPU is used only during calculation, it's not a problem at all. The second one gives little different results. Try and see what works the best for you. Never amplify. This parameter ensures that none of used filter bands will boost its gain. Only negative values are going to be applied. Typically, it results in reducing the overall signal level. So you may want to use the automatic gain control or set features to bring the output level back. The disable pass notch option excludes the pass and notch type of filters from building the equalizer's response. Keep it on if you're going to use the dry wet parameter to adjust the equalizer's response depth. It doesn't work properly with the pass or notch filters. This option is relevant only to the M auto equalizer. The transformation panel gives you a possibility to reorganize the built equalizer's response. It's not so useful for matching or separating as it can completely destroy the whole idea. Nevertheless, you may find it interesting for experiments. It must be mentioned that we don't have to always analyze a reference signal in real time. Sometimes it's faster and easier to draw a spectrum we need. For example, if you use a pink noise spectrum as a guide, you can simply draw it. In the M Auto Dynamic EQ, click on this button and select the Draw option. Now you can use the whole power of the Shape Editor to draw anything you like. When finished, click on the same button and select the Finish Drawing. You've just created your own spectrum that you can use for matching or separating. Just one thing, before doing it, check the slope parameter in the analyzer settings on the analysis tab. It must be set to zero. In the M auto equalizer, you can find this option right here in a shape of the draw button. You can also use a file from your hard disk as a reference source. Click on the file button. Find the file in the open browser, click on OK. In no time, M Auto Equalizer will present the reference spectrum. To reach this option in the M Auto Dynamic EQ, click on this button. Finally, I must mention the Linear Phase M Freeform Equalizer. Unlike the previous two automatic equalizers, this one uses FFT Engine to build the equalizer response. All buttons and modes work exactly as they do in M Auto Dynamic EQ and M Auto Equalizer. However, out of three equalizers, this one provides the closest match and deepest separation with a harmonic precision. Whether you need that is another story, as our auditory system doesn't perceive sound as a bunch of harmonics. We rather hear a spectrum envelope, and for that, M Auto Dynamic EQ and M Auto Equalizer do a very good job. And if you are a fan of linear phase equalization, you can still utilize M Auto Equalizer linear phase. Also, some options are missing here, like the bottom and top frequency, for example. And yet in some circumstances, the M freeform equalizer is hard to beat. For instance, fixing studio acoustics, Anyway, with three automatic equalizers, you have quite a few options to choose from. The last note, there are users who worship this matching idea. They believe if they have a good reference track and a powerful matching equalizer, it can fix all their mistakes. Well, it's not going to work like that. Yes, this technique can save lots of time and sometimes it can work wonders. However, the further you are progressing to the final mix, the less effective it becomes. As I mentioned before, it can't turn a dog into a cat, figuratively speaking. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.